Is the Yellowstone supervolcano really going to erupt and end life as we know it? And with the recent unexpected geothermal event in Biscuit Basin, how worried are the scientists studying the Yellowstone caldera? Aren't Yellowstone animals scattering, a sign of an imminent eruption? This week on the show, Dr. Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory joins us in the field to debunk myths, explain the caldera system, and outline what an eruption really looks like. From geothermal eruptions, to ancient ash layers on Mount Everest, massive lava flows, and why earthquakes are the biggest concern, we cover it all. Plus, Mike takes a look at those sensational clickbait videos and shares why this iconic landscape is so breathtaking without exaggeration. If you love volcanoes, geology, or just enjoy the wild side of Yellowstone, this episode is for you. A detailed geophysical study published in the journal Nature by the United States Geological Survey USGS, has refined our understanding of the Yellowstone supervolcano, revealing new insights into its subsurface magma dynamics. Simultaneously, climatological assessments by researchers such as Marcus Stoffel, University of Geneva, have reignited debate about the global systemic risks posed by a potential supereruption not only at Yellowstone, but also at several other active volcanic complexes around the world. The 2025 USGS analysis used electromagnetic imaging techniques to measure the electrical conductivity of rocks beneath the Yellowstone caldera. Because molten rock is significantly more conductive than solidified magma, this method allowed researchers to map the three-dimensional distribution of partially melted zones at high resolution. These findings indicate that the Yellowstone magmatic system is not monolithic. Instead, it consists of heterogeneous pockets of melt embedded within a largely solidified crust. These zones of melt range in size from 2% to 30% and are spatially isolated. Most of the magma is concentrated in the northeastern part of the caldera, where 400 to 500 cubic kilometers of rhyolite magma is present, an amount exceeding that produced by the Mesa Falls eruption, 1.3 million years ago. The heat source beneath this magma is a basaltic intrusion from the mantle, which continues to support and gradually expand this melting zone. Although current data indicate no single, connected reservoir, progressive heating could eventually lead to connectivity between magma chambers, increasing the potential for large-scale eruptions. Historically, Yellowstone has experienced three major eruptions over the past 2.1 million years, Huckleberry Ridge, Mesa Falls, and Lava Creek. The average interval between these eruptions, 735-000 years, is often misinterpreted as a predictive cycle. In reality, the timing of eruptions is not periodic, and the small sample size limits statistical validity. Nevertheless, climatologist Marcus Stoffel and related risk researchers estimate a 16% probability of a VEI-7 or higher eruption globally before 2100. This probability is based on stochastic modeling of volcanic systems, global eruption frequency data, and observed increases in subcrustal magmatism across various volcanic zones. A Yellowstone supereruption would likely follow a multi-phase eruptive cycle. Evidence from past events, including the 630,000-year-old Lava Creek eruption, suggests that smaller, initial eruptions can occur years or decades before the main event. These initial phases are potentially explosive but localized, driven by shallow magma pockets. Once eruptive connectivity is established across the melt zone, the eruption would rapidly escalate. The highly viscous, gas-rich rhyolite magma would produce a Plinian-style ash column that would reach the stratosphere within minutes. 
the eruption column would collapse periodically, triggering pyroclastic density currents PDCs, capable of traveling at speeds exceeding 300 km per hour and devastating an area within a 100 km radius. Geophysical modeling by Larry Mastin, USGS, indicates that ashfall would be widespread. Ashfall as high as 3 cm could reach Chicago, San Francisco, and Winnipeg, while millimeter-scale deposition could affect cities on the U.S. East Coast. Closer to the source, ashfall would reach several meters, causing widespread infrastructure collapse and total agricultural losses.